hey, who's you, sir? I wouldn't do that if I were you. Resistance is futile. Mesa feel no different. Wait for it. We are the Borg. We are the Borg. Mesa judge, I mean, we are the Borg. Told ya. You suck. Hey guys, Ultra Maximus back with another toy review, and today we're warping back to 1997 with a very beat up Borg figure. This is the Star Trek Borg by Playmates in the Warp Factor series. Now, I found this at my local flea market for $2.99. Mint on package! Well, it's on the package. It's, yeah, it's pretty beat up and tore up. But it was kind of cool and kind of cheap, but I figured, why not take a look? So let's go ahead and take a look at this shitty packaging. All right, so here we have the Borg drone in the package. It says Star Trek. It says Warp Factor Series 1. It has a spring-activated features and actually comes with quite a few accessories. This was back when, well, Playmates still made pretty decent toys. I mean, they still do, but they don't paint them. And, well, I guess there's not really a lot of paint going on here, but uh, definitely a lot better than some of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles we've gotten here as of late. Um, it kind of shows the little play gimmick down there. It says the Borg. There's a Borg cube. There's the figure. There are all the accessories. Um, really nothing on the bottom there. Uh, back of the package we'll take a look at here in a second. Uh, so just kind of a close-up. It says Star Trek, and there he is looking all Borgy. There's a little play gimmick. The Borg cube looking pretty cool, and as you can tell, I mean, this thing is seriously warped. Oh, because it's the Warp Factor series! Get it? Huh? Yeah? No, no. Bad joke. Anyway, so here's the back of the package. There's the figure itself. Here are all the accessories. It kind of shows you how to play around with it, and then all the other figures in the wave. They actually had a Riker figure, which I thought about getting. They also had a Picard figure that was in the blue costume, loose. I may pick that up if it's still there next time I go. All right, so take a closer look here. Um, yeah, Borg. Dun, dun, dun. So there's the little play gimmick. If you want to stop and read that, you are more than welcome to. Here are all the other figures. So we get Captain Picard. We get a Q. Looks like we got a Wharf from DS9. Or maybe um, First Contact, maybe. This came out right around the First Contact, like right after First Contact. And, of course, we had Riker back there. And then here are all the other weapons. And he comes with a cell phone from the 80s, apparently, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so here is a bio on the Borg. If you want to pause and read that, you are more than welcome to. So that's pretty much it for this uh, tore up shitty packaging. Let's go ahead and get this figure out of the box and see what we think. So here we have the Borg out of the package and a gray figure against a gray background. Not the best idea, but eh, it is what it is. So he comes with some interesting pieces. He comes with uh, four different accessories, five if you include the base, which is really cool. He also comes with uh, this little booklet um, that kind of shows you what else comes with, uh, you know, all the different Playmate sets. Uh, the Strike Force ships. I remember these. These were really cool. Uh, basically, small ships that had little figures. You could open up and put them in there. Enterprise D, that was pretty cool. I remember that. I remember the Klingon ship. Uh, a Maki fighter. Don't remember that. Remember the Ferengi fighter. Uh, don't remember seeing the Cardassian warship, though. Uh, but those are pretty interesting. Inside, we get a USS Defiant with lights and sounds. Very cool. And then a Klingon knife. Very cool. And then an old school phaser from uh, Star Trek films. Uh, inside, we get Worf with a batleth. Very neat. Picard with a sword. Very odd. Um, Riker uh, there, which on the back of the package has him in the next gen uniform, not the first contact uniform. And uh, I think the one they had at the flea market was in the next gen one too. Q uh, from a particular episode, this Borg figure. Uh, and then here's some of the other 
figures from some of the other waves looking cool definitely digging that uh wave three like the mirror mirror spock that is very cool i wouldn't mind seeing one of those in real life and there's another group so yeah very very cool back even more stuff these are the little strike force figures that like one and an inch quarter tall um had a ton of those back in the day and then a giant klingon head you can open up and it turns i think that turns into the high council hall yeah and then a Borg head you can open up. So yeah, definitely interesting. Now, as far as accessories go, um, he comes with his base. I really do like that. That's a very solid plastic, very uh, bright and vibrant. Very cool. Definitely digging the little display base. I'll be putting him on that for sure. Uh, nice little piece. And then he comes with two of these missiles. They're just gray plastic. It's a... Uh, Got a little bit of detail at the tip. Oh, just the tip. Uh, which is kind of interesting. And they launch pretty far. Then he's got this Borg scanner, which um, looks like a 1980 cell phone to me. Um, yeah. And the funny thing is this piece, and he just fell. I guess resistance was futile, huh, buddy? Um, so this piece... Really looks like a cell phone from the 80s, uh, like I said. And the weird thing is he can't hold it. There's really no way to attach it onto him, which is very, very odd. Um, along with this piece, this is the medical tool um, or surgery tool. I think it says medical. It, it, you know what it looks like to me? It looks like a sex toy. Um, yeah, I don't know. Very, very strange. Um, hmm, don't know, it's even kind of curved at the tip there, so what you making there, playmates? Now, as far as articulation goes on this guy, it is limited, but it's better than some figures, I guess. Um, his head twists back and forth. It's a little limited due to this uh, piping right here. Has no up or down movement. This arm right here moves up only so far because of the tube, and then can move that far back again because of the tube. It does not move out. It does have a twist at the very tip top, but no like elbow articulation because it's a giant machine thing. Um, this arm over here can swing all the way around. It's on a single jointed elbow, if I can get it into focus. Uh, single jointed elbow. Um, and then uh, it also has a twist at the upper arm right there. And then uh, there's a little pincer that you can pince, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, then it has a twist, uh, very tight twist at the waist, but it doesn't go very far. Again, we got these tubes back here, so that hampers that. This leg only goes out just a little bit because of the tubes. Um, goes back farther. Um, there's a twist at the upper thigh, single jointed knee, nothing below the knees, which is unfortunate. Now this leg can kick all the way out that way and then all the way back that way. So yeah, that's pretty much it as far as articulation goes. And then you've got your little missile. We'll fire it off. Let's see if we can, without losing it. Ah, Ooh, there it goes. So yeah. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. It's a 1997 action figure. Taking a closer look at the figure itself, I do like the sculpting. I like all the tubes on it. It's interesting, though, because the tubes up here on the back of the package were actually black. Um, not the light gray, but uh, that's a, play, a Playmates thing. Like the head sculpt, like the kind of deathly toned flesh on it. Uh, it looks a lot more yellowy greenish on the camera than it does in real life it actually looks like dead flesh in real life i like all the designs and detail on the back there um we get a little gold paint in there which is nice all the detail there and the upper shoulder it looks really cool all the headgear looks super super sick i think they did a pretty decent job with it especially for being back in 1997. Now, taking a look at the midsection of the figure, the tubes on his back, you actually have to plug in yourself, which is interesting. I didn't realize that. I like all the copper lines going down the pants. 
The little claw arm is kind of interesting, although it'd been cool if it had the ability to use the other accessories. I like all the detail up in the front. The big giant gun blaster arm's interesting. Um, it, it, the, the black pipes are, are weird. I don't know what's up with that. It kind of makes it look like a vacuum accessory. Uh, maybe one pipe could have done it. I don't know. But uh, overall, I think they captured the essence of the figure pretty well and uh, definitely dig the detail and the surprisingly apt paint apps from Playmates here. So taking a look at the bottom of the figure, the legs down here, uh, again, they did a good job with the paint apps. Uh, surprisingly. I like the copper lines going down and the feet actually have different designs on them which is very cool. It really kind of gives him a hodgepodge cobbled together feel which is the Borg. For comparison, here we have the Borg next to Poe Dameron from Star Wars The Force Unleashed the Black Series. What? Star Trek and Star Wars in the same review? No! Well, it happened. And as you can see, uh, Poe's a little bit taller than the Borg there, uh, but they actually scale a lot better than I thought they were going to, to be honest. So is the Warp Factor series Borg a figure that you want in your Star Trek collection? Well, if you collect Star Trek figures, this is definitely one you want to get. I mean, the Borg were such an iconic bad guy from Star Trek The Next Generation, one of my all-time favorites from that show. Uh, and surprisingly, looking back at this older figure, it's pretty well done, especially for being from Playmates, which I think were really the only Star Trek figures that we had gotten. I remember the uh, Next Generation figures from the late 80s to early 90s, and this is when we started getting more in-depth Star Trek figures and uh, better sculpts, articulation accessories, and show uh, particular pieces, which was really cool, but uh, definitely kind of interesting uh, uh, figure. You know, there's, I think, another one or two other Borg drones that you can get out there. Um, one of them might be from First Contact, and one of them I know is Locutus, which was really cool. And then, of course, there was the Borg Queen as well. So you can get a few different ones to make a nice little hive. So there he is, the Borg drone from Star Trek. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, thumbs it up. If you hate this video, thumbs it down. To watch more Ultra Maximus, click on the links to the right. Don't forget to subscribe and share. And as always, look for more videos in the future.